Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my talk is about property-based integration testing for ap Exxon applications. But first, a little bit about myself. I'm a software architect at Bol.com, and I have been enthusiastic about event-driven design and uh, CQRS, and uh, that is how I arrived at Axon. And about a year ago, we started looking at a new uh, service, new feature for Bol.com, um, so I thought that Axon would be a good choice uh, to implement that with. This is going to be launched in two weeks, so one question becomes more and more urgent as we approach that launch date, and that is maybe applicable to every piece of software. Is it correct? Well, of course, there are several ways how you can verify that, and uh, currently we are running beta tests, which uh, is also a nice, well, not a first, but a nice uh, treat for ourselves. Um, but it's not always that you can use your users to be your testers, uh, and there are other ways to verify the the quality of your software. So there are unit tests, of course, and there are integration tests. Um, but there is a problem, and that is writing test scenarios is tedious. And the more you zoom out from your software, the, the more uh, setup for fixtures you have to do. And the, well, there are always edge cases missed as well. So how do you verify a system and try to avoid that problem. How do you verify a system without writing the scenario? And that is by using a random, randomly generated scenario. So what I'm going to talk about today is property-based testing. Who here knows what property-based testing is about? A few hands, that's good. Uh, in a nutshell, it uses random, uh, randomly generated input it applies that through your system, applies the business logic, and then you get some output that you get to validate. Well, it's a different testing paradigm. So let's put that through an example. Um, if we have a sorting algorithm for a list, the traditional way to test that uh, is to set up a list with some values in it, apply your business logic, and then you want to validate the output. And how do you validate the output of this list? Well, that's easy. You generate the list that is supposed to come out of your sorting algorithm, and then you compare the two. And now we're going to do this using property-based testing. So we start with uh, a random list, and then we apply the business logic. How do we validate the output in this case? Because what we cannot do is create a list that is the correct outcome, and then compare the two, because we don't know what the input looks like. But there are some properties of the, of the sorted list that we know should hold. For example, if you look at two consecutive values from the list, they must be strictly increasing or else the list would not be sorted. So we can implement that uh, check. And then we have at least one of the properties uh, of a sorted list covered. There are other properties that you need to uh, solve. In a way, you are creating a bounding, bounding box around what the solution of your system should look like. So property-based testing focuses on the properties of the output of the system. It's not properties of, in, in a sense of object or class properties. You can think of them as the contract of your system or the post conditions. Sometimes, or maybe oftentimes, they can be hard to define. Um, and you want them to be both gen uh, generically applicable, that they are applicable to random input, and to be specific enough that the bounding boxes don't allow for too much false positives. And then, given such tests for, for the properties, you can test with many randomly generated scenarios. So um, how would this look? for Axon, and why, why is this applicable to Axon? Well, in Axon we have something nice, and that's the commands are materialized interactions with the system. So generating the input of your integration test, you don't have to generate like REST calls or method invocations, but now we can, we can generate commands, which are actually things in our, in our uh, Java application. And we can use the query side to check the output of the system, and use that to verify the properties. Um, so the, the two things uh, 
well, are well aligned to, to work together. As an example, we can look at the so shopping cart, and we have these four commands. Um, well, and we have some properties that we want the shopping cart to verify. For example, the amount paid by the customer must be equal to the, the total price of the items in the card, and all the items are added to the card must be present in the card when the customer pays. And you can see that the first of these properties is an inherent property of the card. You can look at the, you can talk to the query side alone and verify that the price paid equals the sum of prices in the card. But the second property, uh, you need to do some bookkeeping in order to know which products were added. So uh, if you run uh, property-based testing for Axon, what we do is we, we have some inherent properties that you can test just by looking at the query side, but for other properties, we also keep a reference model um, that we use to verify the, the, the query uh, side against. So this could be a randomly generated scenario. And if you look closely, you see that there is a lot of redundancy in the commands that are uh, generated here. Now, if this scenario happens to trigger uh, uh, to fail a verification rule, then we, ha we might have found a bug. But it's a hard, bit hard to debug with such a long list of uh, co commands. So what the system do can do for you is to try to eliminate the, each of the commands and validate if the bug is still present or the, the f validation failure is still present, and then uh, eliminate all the commands from this scenario that are irrelevant in reproducing the bug. So we end up with a scenario, test scenario, that is a proof of a bug in your system. Um, so, uh, of course, you have to do some wiring to set up uh, property-based testing this way. Um, but given, so given the, uh, the generated list of commands, the scenario, what I, what I need to do is first send in each command via the command gateway, uh, apply it to some rules that update my reference model based on the commands that they receive, and then verify the properties by making calls to the query side of my application. And per command, I also need to do some things. I need to have a command generator that uh, helps me put them in the list of commands, so AKA in my scenario. For every command, I need a handler that updates my reference model in the correct way. Uh, and for every business rule that is related to my command, I need to have a validator that checks the query model, uh, the query side, and my reference model and to see if the, if the system is still in a consistent state. In the end, property-based testing, what it gives you it's an, a way to, make, to build integration tests for your excellent application that's easy to, to extend its skills uh, linearly with the number of commands that you have. It's easy to, com to test complex scenarios because the scenarios are created at random for you and you can specify yourself how long you want these scenarios to, to be. It's, it helps you finding bugs and unspecified behavior because you have one interpretation of the specs in the actual implementation, and you have another interpretation of the specs in your reference model. Wherever these things don't align, uh, there might be a bug, or you have some unspecified behavior. For example, uh, what happens? It, can you pay a card before you added any products? How do you do? You want your system to deal with that? Um, but it it might pop up as one of the scenarios. So. Uh, this will force you to think about such cases. The tests are based on business rules instead of examples. So if we come back to the list, the sorting algorithm, in the, in the traditional test, you just have a reference uh, output that you're comparing to, but you lose the logic or the, the idea behind it. Why are these values supposed to be in this order? Well, if you use the property-based testing, you encode that you want them to be uh, strictly increasing. 
And property-based testing is a good match for Axon application because we have commands as, as well, tangible uh, things in our system. And that concludes my talk. Thank you. All right, thank you, Tim. Do we have any questions? Oh, yes. Oh, there's hands going up. That's wonderful. Uh, in, in practice, um, did you find many bugs using this other methodology with uh, property-based testing compared to standard unit testing? Uh, yes. Um, we did find uh, some bugs. And, but I guess about 50% 50, 50 of, well, the violations that you get are, in fact, uh, unspecified behavior and where you, where you either have to update your reference model or tweak your specifications. But yes, but it's more where we found, what the stuff that we found were more edge cases like, uh, well, what happens if you don't have any items in your shopping cart and you still want to go through checkout kind of things. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Two people with the same question. That was good. Hi. Um, do you put constraints on your random generator? Yes. Um, for example, um, well, the commands are generated mostly using reflection uh, on the command types. Um, so, th for example, the aggregate ID uh, is also randomly generated, so what I do is just replace that with known aggregate ID so that at least they all go to, this, to the same aggregate. Um, I constrained like numeric values, like quantity, I keep that between one and, and some sensible value. Um, and uh, the, the random generator that is part of uh, JUnit Quick Check is also al already a little bit constrained in that it, for example, UUIDs that are generated, uh, it, it, they are not UUIDs because they are creating uh, identical values. Um, but yeah, so in order for some of the commands to make sense at all, they have to be constrained. So I run them through some pro post-processing before I apply them to the command gateway, yeah. We've got two more questions. Um, I'm gonna ask a bit of a mean question, I think. Um, it sounds like a lot of effort. Is it not just cheaper to hire a QA tester? Um, well, I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, the, what this does is uh, automated testing, which is uh, the QI, QA guy, is, he's not automated, so I think that's a win in itself. Um, of course, we will also need someone to think of test scenarios that are taken from practice. Uh, but in my opinion, this allows for generating a really large set of test scenarios uh, that even he or she might not have thought of herself. So I, to, I think that is uh, its added value. And this stuff runs in the middle of the night, right? Your QA tester probably won't, <laughs> hopefully. So um, if you... If you have a randomly generated sequence of commands, mm -hmm. um, on our models that we have, most of the time, you wouldn't get very far through that sequence before the model would just say, no, this is a crazy command. Mm -hmm. But that's correct behavior for the model. Right. So how do you, how do you check that it, how do you, you know, detect that the fact that the model rejected your command is correct? Um. I have two ways. The first part is uh, I ignore any exceptions that I get from command handling, and uh, I only verify expected behavior. So if, if a command triggers an, an exception, then my validation, I should see uh, no effect of that command, basically. Uh, and another is that if an exception was returned from a command handler, 
uh, I put that in my reference model and allow validation to pick that up and to check that a, an exception was triggered, in fact. So, okay. <laughs> you're looking puzzled? Yeah. How, how did you know that the exception should have been triggered? Because, because I have the reference model that, so for example, uh, for the check, are all the products added to my cart as expected? I need to keep track of how many commands should have triggered a add product. So I have something in my test suite that does command handling, if you will, and it updates a reference model, which is not, uh, not a database, but some in-memory object. And that command handler that checks any uh, product added uh, commands, uh, it can also validate whether, uh, whether a add product command should go through or sh should trigger an exception. And in that case, I can just check that I indeed received a exception from that last command handler. Okay, we've, uh, we've gone a bit over time, but that's okay. Uh, questions are always uh, apparently uh, driven from interest in how things are being done. So um, please give a warm hand again to, uh, to Tim. Thank you, Tim. Thank you.